So this is in Eclipse with uh, Spectral Tools installed. If we have a look here in installation details, you see that um, Spectra has been installed. We have the Spectra and Synthesis plugin. So basically we have the, the standard installation from the update side of Spectra. Um, yeah, this one looks like we have the latest version. Okay. Now I have imported this D2 counter strategy project from GitHub, from the tutorials. And there is a specification here. This is the one that we already used in the unrealizability part of the tutorial. So we can check realizability. It tells us it's unrealizable. And then we can also generate a counter strategy. Here we get the input written in this um, IO automaton format. There's a way to configure that. If we go to uh, window, then preferences, and then under spectra, you can see here the different formats on the bottom here. So we could print it also in JTLV format, which is a slightly different format uh, that is historically used by JTLV. And then we can again synthesize the counter strategy. And then you will see here that it's written in this other format where it's basically, this is the state. We don't distinguish between input and output variables. And we just list the successors for each state. And we have initial states. Now, oh, I think the default is the other way. But what this project now has, it it is an Eclipse plugin project. So we configured it to be a um, an Eclipse plugin project. And this means it has this manifest. In this manifest, it has dependencies. And it can have dependencies to other plugins, which are either in the workspace or installed in the running Eclipse. So here, the Spectra, Spectra game input, game input, all this stuff belongs to the API of Spectra. You can find it in some other GitHub repository. But here, we only have the binaries, basically, the jar files that are running inside this Eclipse. Now we can still uh, declare them as dependencies of this project. So uh, there's some dependencies, for example, to the Rabin game implementation, uh, the game model, BTD generator, JTLV, all these things that are uh, somewhat necessary to parse specifications and uh, do something interesting with them. So here we have a uh, two pieces of code. Let's start with the very uh, short one. So this, this one has a total of something like 50 lines. And the relevant ones, well, most of them are imports. And then this, this main file here basically says, we're setting the BDD package. This is necessary um, if we want to use the more, the better performance of, of CODD. And then we, of course, need these binaries here for Linux and for, for Windows. Otherwise, we might get some, some issues. Then we set the enable reorder for the BDD engine, so for, for well, CDD that we selected here. And then we want to parse a Spectra specification. So the one that we want to parse here is uh, we use the Spectra input provider. This is from the Spectra API. And we parse the one that is given, the specification that is given to us as the first argument of this Java program here. So it's a self-contained Java program. We're going to translate the abstract syntax of the specification into some Spectra kernel format. Then we're going to generate BDDs from it. And then we're going to use the rubbing game, which is the um, like the, the opposite of the GR1 game, where we are basically playing the game with the environment. And we're going to check whether the environment has a winning strategy. And if the environment has a winning strategy, this means that the original specification is uh, has no winning strategy for the system. So it is unrealizable. We're going to check realizability of the Rabin game. If this is realizable, it means that the environment has a winning strategy. If not, we're going to print that this specification is realizable now from the system perspective. Um, and then we can't go on and generate a counter strategy. So to generate a counter strategy, we use this rubbing concrete controller construction. 
Uh, and then we ask it to calculate a concrete controller based on the game memory of the rubbing game that we just played. So we need to check realizability, otherwise this game memory is not populated. And then, of course, information on uh, the, the game itself that is extracted from the specification. And then we're going to print it to the console. So let's see if we can run this. We run this as a Java application. I need to show you that I already did in run as run configurations under arguments. I already set here uh, the name of this specification. If we wouldn't have this, which is the, the default, so if we just run this, well, we're going to get an array index out of bounds in this line because there is no argument, right? So uh, for that, after you first ran it, you can then go to run as run configurations, and then we can put traffic a1b dot spectra. So we can, of course, put any, uh, any kind of specification that we want to parse, and then we're going to get the controller printed down here. So now uh, this is the very simple part. There is this one is a little bit more complicated. If we just compare the two um, compare with each other, you will see that well we do some more imports. But basically, the first part here is the same. We only uh, take a fixed specification, and then we're doing a little bit more down here. Uh, we basically have this one uh, one line where we're going to to have a look at um, counting the states. So the counter strategy here, down here, we print it as the automaton that we just saw down there. Here we print it in JTLV format. So the two things that we already explored using the options. And then here we're actually uh, going to, so so these, these two ways, uh, they're going to give us some textual representations on the console, the JTLV format and the automaton format. And here, we're just going to explore the strategy in represented as Java objects, the counter strategy. So here, this enum strategy, this is, well, enum because it's enumerated states. It's not a symbolic strategy. It's really an enumerated strategy that contains concrete states. And um, this has this enum strategy that is created by the um, by the counter strategy generator, the Rabin concrete controller construction. This has a bunch of initial states. So all enum strategies have initial states, of course. And uh, here, what we're going to do is we're going to put them on a stack. And then we're going to pop them one by one, uh, check all of their successors, whether we have already traversed them. Um, and if we haven't, then we put it in a list of states and uh, we, we say we want to now traverse that uh, successor. So this way, um, yeah, we're going to, well, maybe not 100% correctly, but we're going to count an estimate of, of the, the number of um, states. So here there's some small mistake if there is an initial state which is not part of, of some loop that can be reached later, then we forget to count it. But this is just to illustrate how to traverse how to traverse the, um, let's say, the Java representation of the counter strategies before we then print the, the counter strategies. So this code is a little bit more, uh, doing a little bit more stuff. So if, if you want to have a look at the structure of the counter strategy, because maybe you don't need all of it, uh, then this is a, Maybe you don't need to print all of it. Then this is one way uh, to have a look at this. And here, now the interesting thing is, let's say you you have a command line application like this, and now you want to use it in some some other way. So here, if we just run it, uh, we can run it inside Eclipse, but that's a bit boring. Let's say we want to run it maybe really on the console. So then you can say export a runnable jar file, we have to select which run configuration. So we had to run it first uh, in Eclipse here. Uh, now we can select the run configuration. So let's do the 
this one here with the parameters, then we have to give the jar a name. Um, I'm going to put it in the, the project directory. As counter strategy here, we can just say, yeah, extract the required libraries into the generated jar. And then we say finish. It's going to give us some warnings because there are some duplicate files. And, um, and maybe something else. I'm not sure. This doesn't sound good. Ah, resources out of sync with the file system. Let's just simply do that again. OK, good. Now only warnings. Um, then we have this jar file generated. Now let's see whether we can run it outside Eclipse. So uh, we're going to go to a console command line and here we only have a normal Java. Let's try to run the jar file that we just created. Now we should get the array index out of bounds exception here. That's expected. And then let's run it on the Spectra specification. And it prints some stuff, which is internally printed uh, in, in Spectra. It prints this thing here from the Xtext validator because we didn't add a specific uh, plugin properties to the generated JAR file. So yeah, that's just cosmetics. We don't have to care about this. Um, the the real thing that we're interested in is the code uh, is the stuff that we actually wanted to do, and this really works. It uses the Spectra APIs, but now inside a command line application and. You can see by the size of this file, um, so it has yeah, 14 megabytes, almost 15. That is not small, but this has, um, the good thing is that this packaged all the stuff that we needed inside the Eclipse plugins to run, and now we can run it outside Eclipse as a console application. So that's a really nice way to start a very lightweight uh, developing applications that use the Spectra APIs and, and then generating them. Uh, you don't even have to have all the Spectra sources that you can get, of course, on GitHub if you want. Uh, you might need them to look at some of the APIs, right? Uh, but um, you can even do it from the plugins that you have simply installed in the in the Spectra, uh, the Spectra plugins that you have simply installed in your Eclipse where you edit your, your specifications and you can create runnable uh, jar files from it, which have all the dependencies. And the code, of course, yeah, it's available on GitHub.